What's going on YouTube? This is Unger to the Max here, coming at you with part two of my national championship preview. Tonight, it's the number three seed Michigan Wolverines taking on the number one seeded Villanova Wildcats. This is the first championship game that Michigan has been in since 2013 when they lost to the Louisville Cardinals. And I believe the score was 82 to 76. Let me double check on that. Hey Siri, what was the score of the 2013 National Championship? Let's see if Siri gets this. Yes. 82. Michigan was beaten by Louisville in the National Championship on April 8th, 2013. Final score was 82 to 76. And Villanova fans obviously remember the last time they were in the that the Wildcats were in the National Championship. 2016. Our Marcus Page hits the shot to tie the game at Oh gee. Oh boy, what was the score? Hang on. Uh, da, 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 da. Hey Siri, what was the score of the 2016 National Championship? 77 to 74. Marcus Page had just tied up the game at 74 with a three pointer for uh, one of the craziest three pointers because. He literally, as he was going up, he ha literally had to, he was going straight up and then had to change in mid-direction, mid-flight and go like that. And somehow he still made it. And then Villanova goes and Archie Diakno brings the ball up and goes like that. And there's Chris Jenkins fling for the three game-winning buzzer beater three-pointer. To give Villanova the victory. So. Like I said. This is the first title game for Michigan since 2013. A lot has changed for Michigan since then. Obviously. For, ex for example. Michigan no longer has Trey Burke. They don't have Nick Stauskas. Mitch McGarry. Spike Albrack. Who hit, started the championship game against Louisville with an absolute bang, but Michigan doesn't have that same firepower, but there is a new generation of firepower at Michigan. You got Mo, Mo Wagner, who might go pro after the season, might not, we'll see. You've got Abdul Rahman for Michigan, um, Zayer Simpson for, as well. So Michigan still has some decent firepower. But can they hang with the firepower of the Villanova Wildcats? Villanova, Jalen Brunson, Omari Spellman, Mikhail Bridges, Connor Gillespie coming off the bench. Devin Ch I don't remember his last name first name, but Devin Chenzo coming off the bench. So as I said in part one of my national championship preview, the key, both these teams love to do outside shooting. That's their specialty, which is interesting because in the 2016 national championship against North Carolina, Villanova relied more on the two-point shots, the mid-range game inside the three-point line. Whereas... Villanova this season is relying heavily on the three-point shot. So, can Mich Michigan defense slow down that Villanova three-point shooting barrage that absolutely hammered Kansas? Villanova set a record for 18 three-pointers in a Final Four game. Let me repeat that. 18 three-pointers. That's a Final Four record. So, but part of the reason Villanova was able to do that was because of the matchup. Omari Spellman, 
who's from Cleveland, Ohio, by the way, was able was matched up with Azabuke from Kansas. Azabuke is used to playing playing against guys who get down in the low post and post post their guy up. Spellman doesn't do that. He will sometimes, but he's part of this new generation of centers and power forwards that step out and shoot the three-pointer and the mid-range game. So Spellman would stay more on the three-point line. Azabuke wasn't able to get out there. So Spellman was left with like 10, I know this isn't 10 feet, but with about 10 feet of space between, uh, if Azabuke was here, Spellman was here. There, and Azabuke didn't have enough time to close the distance and get to the basket, or and get and and defend Spellman and stop him from shooting the three pointer. There just wasn't enough time to close that distance. Well, Michigan Mo Wagner. Mo Wagner from Michigan is much more athletic than Azabuke. So, I think he's, he can get out there. So, and they've said this on ESPN. I think those two players will cancel each other out. So, it's going to be up to the other players. And I think what could tip the balance in favor of Villanova is the depth that Nova has. Like, other than Abdul Rahman and Xavier Sams Simpson, I don't know who else Michigan has that can allow them to stay in the game. Last I checked, Villanova was about a seven-point favorite. Might be closer to six and a half. It's around that area. But Villanova, as I said at the top, Villanova has Jalen Brunson. McKay, the AP player of the year, I might add, J Jalen Brunson, um, Mikhail Bridges, Connor Gillespie, DiVincenzo, and Gillespie and DiVincenzo both come off the bench. So, um, and not Phil, and Phil Booth, I almost forgot, who was part of that 2016 national championship team. Actually, that's important. Quick side note, both. Three of the players I just mentioned, Brunson, Bridges, and Booth, all three of them were on that 2016 National Championship winning team. So they know what it's like to win a championship. So even for the senior and the other seniors that were on that team, even if they didn't play in the game, they know what it's like to be in a National Championship and they know what it's like to win a national championship. So they can tell the younger guy, the freshmen and the sophomores who weren't part of that team, what it was like. Because having that experience on Villanova, having that experience, even though it's only three players, or may, three players, maybe more, but primarily those three, Booth, Bridges and Brunson. Wow, that's interesting. They all start with their last names all start with the letter B. Wow, that's kind of cool, actually. But anyway, so that experience and that veteran leadership might tip the balance, the scale in favor of Villanova. Because, let me see. I wanted, because Michigan had really had to grind out that game against Loyola Chicago to come back and even be in this position. Because for most of it, for most of that game, Loyola Chicago was controlling the game. At times, it looked like Michigan was lucky to be hanging in that game. And then in the second half, the Michigan's defense stepped up and took control. Granted, Loyola Chicago was still able to get some shots in. Hang on. So I want to look up the roster for Michigan right now. So I can get an idea of it. Okay. 
Yeah, Xavier Sampson, Muhammad Abdu- Ali Abdur Rahman, Mo Wagner, Xavier Sampson. Those are the big three from Michigan. Uh, so, who who else from Michigan is going to step up and help them? That's going to be the question for Michigan. Because we know Villanova has a decent bench that can come come in and supply just as much firepower as the starters. DiVincenzo and Gillespie are the two primary bench players, but Villanova has other guys who can come in and supply offense and defense. Villanova shut down Kansas, which doesn't surprise me, because all Kansas had, really, in my personal opinion, all Kansas had in terms of star players and players to keep Kansas potent to possibly have kept who could have possibly kept Kansas in that game was Devontae Graham and Malik and Newman. But Villanova did a great job stopping them from really getting going. Yes, Graham made a couple layups here and there but he never really found his groove. Same with Newman. And I think part of it is that a lot of the shots Kansas was taking weren't going in the basket. But that's also because of Villanova's defense. So, sorry to disappoint any Michigan fans who might watch this video later, but I'm going to go with Villanova in... Ugh, do I think this is going to be a close game? No. I think Vill It might be close early, but I think in the end, Villanova is just going to overwhelm Michigan. It might be close throughout, but like I said, Villanova just, I think in the end, just has too much firepower. And they will... They might not hit 18 three-pointers like they did against Kansas, because Michigan is a much more, a much tougher defensive team. But I think Villanova can, will find their, the three-point stroke. And once that happens, it could be a long night for Michigan. So, I'm going to say the final score is. Hmm. I, hmm. Villanova, 88, Michigan, 76. So I think it's going to be a 12-point victory for Villanova tonight. And the third banner will be raised to the rafters at the Pavilion in Philadelphia at on the campus of Villanova. So, speaking of the Pavilion, I was actually at a Villanova game against Georgetown. I actually have videos of that in a different playlist, so check that out. But I was asking them, a Villanova fan who was there, who I was sitting next to, like, why is Villanova's arena so small? Because I believe the pavilion only seats about 6,000. Granted, this season, due to renovations, they were playing at Wells Fargo Center. But anyway, and the re... The reason Villanova has such a small arena is because I think it's the city of wherever they are won't let them build a big arena. But I'm sure if Villanova had a bigger arena, fans would flock to it. Because for the Villanova-Georgetown game at Wells Fargo Center, it was almost a sellout. So... Philadelphia loves Villanova. It's just that the arena, the pavilion, only seats about 6,000. So, not that many people can go see the the Wildcats. Which is a little disappointing. But it is what it is. And Chrysler Center is one of the biggest arenas I've seen. So, oh, and on... Speaking of Chrysler Center and the Pavilion, I am actually going to 
be watching the game with a lot of Michigan fans tonight um, at a place called Fox and the Hound. So, I will try and do a lot, little bit of live streaming tonight. Maybe not doing my the the commentary that I've done for the past couple of Cavaliers games, but because it might be hard for you to hear me due to uh, all the Michigan fans, but I might do a little bit of live streaming tonight. We'll see. But I think it's going to be a good game. But like I said, in the end, I just think Villanova is going to overwhelm Michigan and come out with an 88-76 victory. So, that's going to do it for now. Hope, you, hope everyone enjoyed this video. This is Unger to the Max, signing off. Salute, go Cavs, go Jackets, and go Nova.